I have a confession to make. During the worst part about living in Japan, the horribly hot and super humid summer, I've actually escaped to Sweden, my second home. And it's been really nice. And what I realized now when I'm back, yes, this is Japan again, was that Japan is very, very different from the rest of the world. And, you know, with fresh eyes, from a perspective, from a person abroad that still know Japan's ins and outs, I've decided to make this video. And in this video, I want to start talking about the elephant in the room, the thing that every tourist realizes when they come here and they stay here for longer than a couple of weeks. And that is the state of Japanese technology. There is no sugarcoating this, but the state of technology in Japan is really bad. And this is an interesting topic because if you come here as a tourist, you know, if you come to Shibuya, Tokyo or Kyoto or Osaka or wherever, you might actually think that Japanese technology looks really futuristic. That Japan is living in the future as so many TikTok and Instagram Reel videos are showing you every day. But the reality is that Japan is just really good at hiding how behind they are. So let's say you go to a conveyor belt sushi place, right? And you see all these tablets and these belts that serve you sushi, like in the future. And you might think, wow, this is really, really cool. And I wish my country had this. But I promise you, the amount of manual labor in the back end to make these systems work is insane. And I bet you, that when you order a sushi, the only thing that happens is that there's some printer somewhere in the back that prints out the order, and then that's how the sushi is made. There's no secrets that makes these systems work, except people doing their best to hide how manual it actually is. And the same goes for banking. Like, I thought that Japan has been coming ahead again, you know? Japan is doing better in technology when it comes to banking, where they used to be super traditional. Like now, you can actually do a lot of things online that you couldn't before. But when I went to Sweden, I realized that, yes, Japan is moving forward, but the rest of the world is accelerating forward so much faster. Like, for example, I set up a bank account with UFJ, one of the biggest Japanese banks. And you could do a lot of it online, but then there was some flaws, right? So I had to go into the office. And guess what? It was all manual. The reason why something was wrong in the online form was because somebody couldn't read the printed out copy of whatever I put in online. So I basically just had to go and see the printed out form myself and then fix it with a staff. This took like two hours. And this is what I mean, is that the customer interface looked really nice. It looked like something you would see in the West, but behind it all, there's just a bunch of printers and Excel sheet that makes the whole system run. And don't even get me started on payments in Japan. Like, as many of you know, cash is king in Japan. And that is good. I mean, I like cash. I think cash is a necessity in all countries because IT systems can be down sometimes and then you can't pay with credit cards, right? But the problem in Japan is that there's all these new coins and bills being introduced all the time. And so when you go to a machine and there's tons of machines to pay in Japan, like not all payments are done person to person. Actually, I would say more than half are done with some kind of machine in Japan. When that happens, Sometimes you can't pay with your coin or your bill because it's too new or sometimes it's too old, depending on the place. Some places have machines that only take old bills. Some places have machines that only take new bills. This is a huge headache and it's impossible to understand, especially if you're a tourist, right? And the Japanese people are not like, oh, you can't pay with this bill? Well, hey, let me help you. They're like, oh, pff, too bad for you. I guess you can't pay here or eat at this restaurant. It's super annoying. And this is only the cash part of the equation. When you pay with credit cards or any other digital payment in Japan, there are, first of all, like 600 different ways of paying and they all are suboptimal. Like, let me give you an example with credit cards. So you go into a restaurant, they take credit card. Sometimes they only take credit cards during dinner because they don't want to be charged by a credit card at lunch when they have really low margins. Or sometimes they only take a specific kind of credit card, 
like Japanese bank credit cards only, for example. And sometimes they charge a fee and they tell you afterwards, oh, by the way, we included this fee in the credit card that, you know, the credit card company eh? takes, but we forgot to tell you. But it's not all bad. Japan is still a master of precise execution, which means that when they decided to go with a technology fully, they go all in. Let's take self-checkout, for example. Like, I've been using self-checkout for so long abroad. I mean, it's been around for like 20 years now. And it always sucks. You always feel like a thief. And whatever you're doing, even if you really try to do it in the best way possible, still things start beeping and, you know, personnel comes up to you with a look like, oh my God, we got a thief right here. And it just takes so long. Well, in Japan, they finally started rolling out self-checkout. And it's this perfect blend between manual labor and machine labor. And let me give you an example of how it works, right? So first, you go to the checkout and there's a person scanning all your items. And because Japan, the workers do it impeccably fast. And then when it comes to the payment, every staff member has four to five checkout machines where you do the payment and where you put all the items you bought inside a plastic bag or whatever. And it works so fast and so seamless because the cashier, they will check that you haven't stolen everything, obviously, because they are the ones scanning all the items, but they don't have to deal with any of the payment or any of the putting things in the bags. So this system is a hundred times faster than whatever I've seen in the West. It's so well implemented and it just works. A perfect example of taking your time to implement something to make it perfect, which is where Japan shines the most. The other thing that needs to be discussed is the Japanese working culture. And right off the bat, I want to start with the good things, because actually there are a lot of good things with working in Japan. You know, when you look at Western media, you might have the image that working in Japan is hell and nobody should ever do it. But in reality, it's not that bad. If we take overtime, for example, something that Japan is infamous for, it's actually become a lot better. And now there is actually more overtime work in places like the US or Canada or even the UK. And so that has really helped because, you know, people have pushed Japan for so long that they're actually taking overtime seriously now. Same goes for harassment. Sexual harassment and power harassment used to be huge issues in Japan, but now they've been discussed so much and there's so many policies implemented in Japanese companies that it's actually getting better by the day. And let's not forget the thing that Japan is known for, quality. And the thing is that this is something I can attest to, that everyone from the CEO to the janitor in any company takes quality work super seriously. Everyone treats their job like it's everything and that it's really important to do well. And of course that has some negatives, but also some real big positives. Like I can't count how many times in the West or in almost every country, basically, I've seen people, you know, customer facing people that don't take their job seriously. You know, janitors that don't clean or cashiers that, you know, treat their customers really poorly. And everybody just seems to be okay with it, you know, like a staff member doesn't do their job and everybody's like, hmm, well, you know, they have low pay, so whatever, you know, it's, they should do their job poorly. And yeah, pay could definitely be better for, you know, lower level staff in Japan too. But it's so beautiful to see a janitor really take their space of cleaning super seriously and doing a good job every day, like their life depends on it. That is just really admirable and something I really think is beautiful and good about Japanese working culture. But of course, there are some really bad things. And the first thing I want to talk about is resistance to change. Japan has two major issues in the workplace. And one of them is that the country is really old. In fact, it's the oldest country in the world. And the second issue is that most companies have a seniority-based system. Basically meaning that the longer you work there, the more promotions you get, even if you're not the smartest tool in the shed. And this problem has accumulated. 
Because you see, in the 40s, most people were young and they saw their opportunities and security in the workplace. So they were creative. They did a bunch of overtime work and did a really good job, right? At the chance of becoming a manager one day. But as the years passed, the situation got worse and worse where you have a bunch of older people being senior manager and not that many young people in the junior positions because every year less and less people are born here and more and more people are old. So now you have this really resistant to change culture where sadly most people in Japan don't want to see change because they're retiring soon anyways. And so you end up with companies, especially in office work, where you have really old tools to do basic things. Like, for example, you probably heard about this, but Excel is king in this country. And that is because it's one of the few tools that older people feel comfortable with. And so instead of using scheduling tools or specific tools for specific tasks, they just use Excel for everything. So we have Excel sheets for attendance or Excel sheets for really complicated planning with a thousand different sheets and, you know, sheets that are so big, you need a supercomputer to run them, right? And this is all because older people are just scared of anything new. I mean, this is a great example of this guy who's an artist in Excel. And you look at that and think, oh, wow, that's really cool. But I just think the guy doesn't even know that there's other tools than Excel to do anything. And this leads me to my second issue. Working in Japan, I realized how many people are just unmotivated to do anything. Like, you have people my age or younger people who just see work as something they need to be at, even if they have to do overtime, to just sit and try to do as little as possible. I think that quiet quitting is probably bigger in Japan than in any other country I've been in. In fact, even though there's not a specific word for quiet quitting, there are so many terms that are used and mean basically the same thing. Like basically, take madogi wazoku. That means a person sitting next to the window. And it refers to people who usually are senior and got a window seat at the office. And all they do all day is just look out the window because they have no real tasks to do. They can't get fired and you just sit there waiting for retirement. And another term is yurei sha, which basically means ghost person. These are people, I mean, there's so many of them in Japanese offices. They look like they're working very hard. They always sit in front of their computer. And even if you go up to them, you will see some Excel sheet or something going on in their computer. But nobody can actually tell what they're doing at the company. Again, just different forms of quiet quitting in Japanese ways. And this is so sad because this used to be the country that gave us the Walkman and Nintendo and countless other amazing innovations. And now we see people just being unmotivated to do anything because of the seniority based structure where they know that, well, the company is not doing well, so they might not even be promoted anyways. And even if they get promoted, they have to work for five, 10 years before a promotion comes, even if they do a good job. I think these problems are systemic in Japan. And even though they're getting better, there's still huge issues with these systems taking so much away from workers that are talented and that should be motivated to do the next great thing Japan has to offer. But instead, they're just stuck in desk jobs when they end up doing nothing. And this leads me on to my last point, the Japanese people. And I mean, I'm going to stereotype here, okay? I know Japan has over 130 million people. So obviously there are tons of different people. Even though with that said, I would say that the Japanese people as a group are more similar than any other group of people I've seen in any other country. But again, only stereotyping here. And the first thing I want to talk about is the way Japanese people think about life. I think there are many beautiful things about it, like dedication, for example, or perfection is something that is really a part of everyone's life here. And that is basically to say that you either do something really, really well, or you don't do it at all. And that goes with hobbies. Like if you like hiking, it's not just a, you know, activity you do once a month. It's something you dedicate your life to. 
you go hiking on the biggest mountains, you buy the best gears, and you really try to maximize your skill in hiking. And yeah, that can go a bit overboard sometimes, but I think it's an admirable quality. And I think that's also why Japanese people are so good at what they're doing. Like, you know, if you're a clothes maker or a knife maker or really any maker of anything, you are just so good at it because you strive for perfection. And Japanese people really believe that they're part of a greater whole. Like, in Japan, being an individual is not something many people see themselves as. They see themselves as being Japanese, part of Japanese society, which I think is one of the major reasons why there's so little crime here. Like, I really think that Japanese people believe that whatever they're doing that's not good, like if they throw trash on the ground or if they do something illegal, that could halt the progress of society and destroy the fabric that keeps Japanese society together. And I think that's super admirable. And that's really why Japan is working so well, despite so many of its flaws. But this also comes with the fear of being judged. Because to be honest, of all the countries I've been to, Japanese people are the people I felt are the most afraid of what other people think. And that's probably why when so many tourists come here, they really think that, oh my God, Japanese people are the nicest in the world. And like, you know, I go to this 100 yen shop and people treat me like royalty. That's crazy. It would never happen in my country. And that is true. It is really true that Japanese people are so polite and so nice. But that's also probably why the same foreigners, if they decide to stay here for longer or even live here, they suddenly realize that, oh my God, Japanese people are not that nice at all. And a lot of people even go away with thinking, oh, Japanese people are actually super mean and rude once you get to know them. I don't think that's true. I think Japanese people are just as rude or mean as in every other country. I just think that the contrast makes it feel that they're way ruder because to the surface, you know, the tatemai, as they call it in Japan, the, the face they show to the public, they're so polite and so nice. And then when they open up a bit, they complain a lot, they're rude, they talk shit about people. And you're like, oh my God, this person is a completely different person. I can't believe it. But that's just the real face. You know, the face that most people wear on their sleeve in other countries. And I think this is a big issue because it puts a lot of stress on people to be at their best whenever they're in public. And I think that also makes them very afraid of taking risks, which you can see in all the other things I talked about, like in technology, afraid of taking risks, in the work, afraid of taking risks, you know, doing your own thing, which is very sad. And I think that's something that Japanese people can really work on. But again, that's also why we have all these good things in Japan. Why, you know, you get treated like royalty in a ramen shop or a 100 yen store. And, you know, it's like, it's a bit of give and take. But in any ways, that is really the take I have on Japan. 